this section here for 8.4, um, they have log and exponential equations. We covered our exponential equations in chapter number seven. So this bullet and this bullet um, are covered in chapter seven. So what we're going to focus on in this one here is log equations. Now this lesson is done in two parts. I'm going to do the algebraic part of solving equations in the first part, and then the second part will be the applications or the word problems. Okay, so let's go back to exponential equations to begin with. If I wanted to solve this equation here um, algebraically, the first thing that I look at is can I use a common base? So can I write 81 and 3 as a common base? And I can, I can do that using powers of 3. So I'm going to multiply, or sorry, rewrite each one as a power of 3. So I know that 81 is the same as 3 exponent 4, and 3 is already a power of 3. So instead of 81, I'm going to have 3 exponent 4 to the x plus 2 equals, and this is already a power of 3. I'm just going to distribute the 5 inside the brackets. Okay, so again, I'll distribute these inside the brackets. So I've got 3 to the 4x plus 8 equals 3 to the 5x minus 10. Okay, so now that I have um, a common base on both sides, I'm going to make like a wedding DJ and drop the base and make my exponents equal. And then I would just solve for x. So solving for x, I would subtract 4x from both sides. That's gone, and I'm left with 5x take away 4x is x. And then I am going to add 10 to both sides, and I get that x is equal to 18. Okay, so that's why I solved those algebraically. Now, in Chapter 7, we also looked at how do we solve it when they can't have a common base, like this. 4 to the x equals 12. I cannot write 12 as a common base of 4. There's no power of 4 that will equal to 12 exactly. So what we did in Chapter 7 is we looked at solving it graphically. So look at solving it graphically, I can see that x would be approximately 1.79. But again, that is an approximate answer, not an exact answer. So what we're going to focus on in this chapter is how would we be able to get an exact answer for this question, not being able to use a common base. So to refresh your memory, if I want to write a log in exponential form, I'm going to isolate the log and use the circle of logs to do that. So for example, if I had log base 4 of x equals 17, and I wanted to write that in exponential form. So I would use my circle of logs. So I would have 4 to the exponent of 17 equals x. And we used this anytime x was an argument or a base. Well, the only way to algebraically solve an exponential equation with common bases is to switch to log form. So we know how to go from log form to exponential form. We're going to look at how do we do it the other way around. So to go and write an exponent in a log form, just like before, you're going to isolate the exponent, this time instead of the log. And because we love logs, well, I love logs. I hope you love logs too. Since I love logs, I'm going to use BAE. And BAE is an acronym which means base answer equals exponent. What do I mean by that? If I have something written here in exponential form, this is in exponential, base to the exponent equals answer. To write it in log form, since we love logs, we're going to use BAE. So log of base of the answer equals the exponent. So this will work all the time. So let's go back to that 4 to the x equals 12, and now we can solve it algebraically. Okay, so I'm going to use BAE. Log, B stands for base, A stands for answer, E stands for equals exponent. So that's my BAE. So the answer to this question, log x equals log base 4 of 12. This is an exact answer. 
Well, we already know what it was approximately. It was approximately 1.79. So I want to see, did I do this correctly? Because I already know graphically what the answer was. So if I want to, I can put this into the calculator using the ways that we looked in 8.3, log base 4 of 12, or log of 12 divided by log of 4, and you can see I get the exact same answer that I did graphically. So I know that that is correct. And you can actually see here, this is what we did graphically, and you can see that these two answers match. So this is a new strategy that we can use anytime we can't use common base. So to solve something algebraically with an exact value, we're going to use Bay to switch it to log form. So something like this. 3 times 5 to the exponent of x equals 18. So just like we did for log form, we have to isolate the power first. So before we could use circle of logs, we isolate the log. Before I can use bay, I need to isolate my exponent. And I'm going to do that just by dividing both sides by 3. So that's gone. I get 5 exponent x equals 18 divided by 3 is 6. Now, I can't write 5 and 6 using the same base, so I'm going to use bay. So log of base, b stands for base, a stands for answer, e stands for equals exponent. So this would be the exact value for the answer. That's what x equals exactly. If I asked you to solve to the nearest tenth or nearest hundredth, then I would put it into my calculator and get that the solution is about 1.11. Okay, always a good idea to check for this and any equation that you solve. How do I know if I did that right? Well, I'm going to go back up to my original equation. I'm going to put the left side in y1, the right side in y2, and I'm going to start my answer or my table at my answer to see if it works. So you can see I did that, y1, y2. I start the table at my answer, and you can see y1 equals y2, so I know I solved that correctly. Okay, let's look at another type of question. So in this question, I have powers on both sides. So they can only be used when I have a power on one side equal to a number on the other. So I can't use bay for this because I have two powers, two different bases. So I need to look at another way to solve it. Well, I can't solve it algebraically, but I could put it in my graphing calculator using y1, y2 intersect, and I could see what my solution is. I can see that the solution is about negative 0.42. But if I wanted to come up with an algebraic exact value for that, I need to use a different strategy. So let's look at this one here. So my problem is that my variable is in the exponent, and there's only one way to get at that exponent, and that's back in the laws of logs. If I were to use the power law on this, I could bring my exponent down, and then I can get at it because the x is in the exponent. Well, the only way I can use power law is if I have a log, and I don't have a log. I just have exponents. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the log of both sides. If I do it to both sides, it's fair. And by taking the log of both sides, I can now apply the power rule and bring my exponent down. So let's do that. Let's bring our exponent down for each one and look at what we have left. So we have 3x times by log of 5 equals to 2x minus 1 multiplied by log of 3. Now, don't let this intimidate you. Log of 5 and log of 3, they're just numbers. They're irrational numbers, but they're just numbers. So treat them like you would treat it if it was a 5 or if it was a 3. So in this one here, I'm going to distribute it inside the brackets. So I have 3x times log 5 equals 2x times log 3 minus log 3 times 1 is just log 3. So to get at x, I'm going to put all of my terms with an x on one side and all of my terms without an x on the other side. So I'm just going to subtract 2x times log 3 from both sides. So that's gone. Again, these are just numbers. I can't do 3x take away 2x because it's 3x times this log 5, which is also a number. So I just have 3x times log 5 minus 2x times log 3 
equals to negative log 3. So to get x by itself, I just factor out x, and I'm left with 3 log 5, take away 2 log 3, equals negative log 3. And then the question that is taking forever, I'm almost done, divide both sides by that number. Three log five minus two log three. Oh my goodness! And then I'm done. Okay, so almost done here. X is equal to negative log three all over three log five minus two log three. A long process, but we got there. Okay, so I can put this in my calculator. Do, do, do. There it is. And if I recall, that's the same answer that we got when we solved it graphically, about negative 0.42. So I know that that actually works. Okay, so this would be an exact answer. Exact just means without rounding, without decimals, an exact value. Okay, so again, I can always check in the calculator by doing left side in Y1, right side in Y2, find out if they start the table at this solution, will y1 equal to y2? So I actually did that. y1 equals y2, so I know that I did that correctly. Okay, so I want to look at some log equations now. So we've looked at how to solve exponential equations by changing them to logs. How do we change, or sorry, solve log equa equations like this? So I have log base 4 of 3x plus 2 equals log base 4 of x minus 6. So notice that the log has the same base. So I'm going to borrow from chapter 7. In chapter 7, we dropped a base. Well, in chapter 8, we're going to keep calm and drop a log. So let's try that. Before I get too carried away dropping a log, I'm going to state my restrictions. So here, I can't take a negative log, log of a negative number. 3x plus 2 has to be greater than 0. So x has to be greater than negative 2 thirds. Here, x minus 6 has to be greater than 0. So x has to be greater than 6. Let's combine those together in one restriction. So x greater than 6 covers both of them. So that would be my restriction. Okay, so I have log on both sides. Okay, the base is the same, so I'm ready to go. So I'm going to drop a log and make my arguments equal. And then I just solve. So I will subtract x from both sides. That's gone to get 2x. And then subtract 2 from both sides to get negative 8. I'm going to divide both sides by 2, and I get negative 4. So the first place I check it is in my restriction. So my restriction was that x had to be greater than 6. Well, negative 4 is definitely not greater than 6. So I know that's not true. That would be an extraneous root. So if the only solution I reach is an extraneous solution, that tells me there is no solution to this question. Now let's pretend, I know this would never happen to you, let's pretend you forgot to state your restrictions. You would catch it in the check because I know you're not going to forget to check. So let me show you that. Left side in Y1, right side in Y2, start the table at negative 4. So you can do that and you can see that Y1 does not equal to Y2 because they're both errors. So this would also tell you there is no solution. So take comfort in the check. If you don't catch it in the original equation, you will catch it in the check. But this idea of dropping logs is so important and so valuable, even survivors drop a log. True story, and it's been a game on two different survivors, and this game here was you did not want to drop the log. The first one to drop a log is out. The last one standing, they win. Okay, let's try another question. 
So this one is a little bit different than the others because it was log base 5 plus log base 5 equal to another number. So it wasn't just log equal to a log. So I want to rewrite this here uh, in a simpler form. So I'm going to go back to that matching law. So 1 is the same as a base log of 5 with an argument of 5. So when the base and the argument match, remember that's always 1. So I can rewrite this as log base 5 of x plus 1 plus log base 5 of x minus 3 equals instead of 1 I'm going to write it as log base 5 of 5. So now that they are all the same base and this is added I can multiply my arguments together. So this will be x plus 1 times x minus 3 is x squared minus 3x plus x minus 3 equals to log base 5 of 5. Okay, I forgot to state the restriction, so let's just go back and do that before I get too carried away. x plus 1 has to be greater than 0, so x has to be greater than negative 1, and x minus 3 has to be greater than 0, so x is greater than 3. So we're going to use just x greater than 3 because that covers both of them. Okay, so I should have done them at the very beginning, but I still caught it, so that's okay. So on both sides I now have a log base 5. So I'm going to drop a log and make them equal. So x squared minus 2x minus 3 equals 5. So subtracting 5 from both sides, I get that quadratic which I now want to factor as x minus 4x plus 2 equals 0. So x can equal 4 or x can equal negative 2. So I want to check that, and first place I check it is in my restrictions. So x has to be greater than 3, so this one doesn't work, it is extraneous. So it appears that the only solution is x equal to 4, but we need to check that in our calculator as well. Now, there's always more than one way to do a question, and this question is no different. You could have also solved this question by using the circle of logs. So if you didn't like this whole log base 5 thing that I did over here, log base 5 of 5 is the same as 1, let's look at how I could solve that in a different way, still algebraically, still using logs, but using circle of logs instead of drop a log. Let's try this one. So I still multiply these together, log base 5, of, and then that was x squared minus 2x minus 3 equals 1. So at this stage here, instead of writing 1 as log base 5 of 5, you could do circle of logs. And then you could have that 5 equals x squared minus 2x minus 3, and then away you go from there and you get the same value as before. Okay, so we're at that same point. And actually looking at it, that probably looks a little bit easier. But there's two different ways. Just depends on which way you kind of think of the question. But you can see here I get x squared minus 2x minus 8, which is what I also got over here. So just a different way of coming up with the answer. So log on both sides, drop a log, or circle of logs. Okay, but back to that check, I said that the answer was only 4, that was the only answer we came up with. So I'm going to put the left side into y1, the right side into y2, start my table at 4, and I can see that I got the same answer. Okay, so to summarize part 1 of 8.4, you can solve exponential equations graphically by using y1, y2 intersect, just like you can solve log equations graphically using y1, y2 intersect. If I want to solve them algebraically, exponential equations solved algebraically are either going to be solved by drop the base or using bay switching to log form. Log equations solved algebraically are going to be solved using circle of logs or drop a log. And the most important part of every question is to check their answers. So again, I cannot resist another joke about logs being musical wood. I just find it so funny. Log a rhythms. So there we go and I promise this will be my last log a rhythm joke about logs being musical wood. 
So you guys can go to do your practice questions, numbers one to three. I have detailed solutions on D2L, and then you can move on to your homework questions. So I hope this lesson helped, and I will see you for the next one, which is part two, word problems.